knew that a black blind boy could make a living from chasing a ball and speaking. Today we welcome to High Noon Darren Harris from Birmingham in the UK, where of course the Commonwealth Games are taking place right now and he's had to tear himself away from the opening ceremony that he attended, amongst other things, because he needed to be with us on High Noon. He's got so much experience to share with us. We are speaking to Darren, who is a Paralympian, a dual Paralympian, judo and England's most capped and decorated soccer player, blind soccer player. He's also an author, he's a speaker, he's a transformational coach, and we know that he has great insights to share with all of us today. Darren, welcome to High Noon. Hi, Nikki. How are you doing? It's great to have you with us. And Darren, I want to talk today about the visual metaphor that you use with your audiences when you're trying to help them to shift perspective and see themselves and life differently. You've got so many wise words to say using this visual metaphor of sight. Yeah, so one of my metaphors is the eyes are useless when the mind is blind. And I suppose what I mean. Say that slowly. That is a brilliant line. The <laughs> eyes are useless when the mind is blind. Wow. Unpack that for us. So I guess what I, what I discovered when I was losing my sight it was that uh, you know my focus up until that point was on all the things that I couldn't do because you know I was losing my sight and I was blind. And I think when people try and imagine themselves to be blind, they find that, you know, quite difficult. We know that we are visually dominant and it's the sense that we use more than anything else. So for people to grasp what it's like to live without sight, that can be quite traumatic. And it was a traumatic experience for me losing my sight too. But what I realized was that, you know, it wasn't really losing my sight that stopped me from doing anything. It was really how I thought about that. It was my mindset, you know, my thoughts and feelings that I associated with blindness that were really holding me black. And once I was over, able to overcome those, then I could go on to accomplish all the wonderful things I did. So it's what goes on in between your ears in this thing called the brain and combining what goes on in your head and your heart is what you need to overcome the invisible obstacles in life. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I tell people all the time, there's no point having your eyes if you don't use what's in between your ears. And our brain's incredibly powerful. It has the ability to, to adapt. It's very plastic in, it, in the way it, it, it works. And so o over time, I've been able to develop all these extra skills, uh, perceptions, you know, echolocation, spatial awareness. These are some of the things that I use every single day uh, to get around life. And actually, People often close their eyes and think that's my experience of being blind. But of course, it's not because I've had an awful long time to, to master some of these skills. And most people are aware of the sort of the 10,000 hour rule, uh, although it's just a guide. But if you think about how long I've had to adjust to this and what I've been able to do with it, that's that's my experience of it. So, you know, things can be seem really daunting for us at first, you know, whenever something's taking away from us or whether we go for a challenge or some type of adversity, we think we'll never get over it. But actually, with time, by sort of tapping into the expertise, people have already overcome those challenges themselves. You can generally find an, a path that's that's already been done by someone else. Darren, you give us so much hope and I'd like you to touch on oversight. I know you talk about things like hindsight and farsight and nearsight and insight. But today, oversight is actually a critical skill. If we can master this, we can carve a way forward for ourselves. Yeah, so lots of people have uh, big goals in their lives, massive goals. And what they sometimes don't really think about is how that fits into the, the bigger picture. So oversight is our ability to see the big, big, big picture. Sometimes we have to step back and think, you know, why am I doing this? You know, how does this um, affect the rest of my life? You know, back in the day when I was a full time athlete, when I was training twice a day, six days a week for uh, it seemed <laughs> for, forever. Um, 
you know, it had a massive impact on everything else in my life, you know, had an impact on my relationships, had an impact on what I could do in my social life. And so sometimes you have to make that choice of whether you're going to commit to a particular path and say, this is what I want to do. And I want to be the best I can be in this area. I want to really excel in this area, but recognize that that will have an impact on other aspects of your life. And as long as you, you understand that and you're prepared for that, then you can start to put things in place so that your family, those, those, care pe those people you care about the most in your life, understand what's involved, understand the journey that they're also going to have to go on if they're, if they're going to be part of your particular goal. Or you can accept that, you know, maybe that's not a sacrifice that you want to make and that you're prepared just to be satisfied with being just good at something. But ultimately, if you want to excel, if you want to be exceptional in, in a particular area in your life, you're going to have to commit to that 100%. Yeah, and you've committed for years and years and years. I mean, if you think about your journey with blindness, it started from 15 months of age and gradually got worse into your 20s, and that was through cancer. You've had to overcome your mental obstacles, your physical obstacles, and you're just an amazing example of the fact that it can be done. It absolutely can be done. So... There is a motto that you have that comes from the place in which you were born, the city in which you were born. And as we wrap up this interview, can you just tell us what those five words are? So I'm from Wolverhampton, which is not far from Birmingham, where I am now, just in, in, the, in the middle of the universe, I, I would say. <laughs> and the motto of Wolverhampton is out of darkness cometh light. And I think that's a, a really valuable message for all of us that sometimes, well, if there were no darkness, there wouldn't be light. And so that contrast and that sometimes you have to go through struggle to succeed is, is something that's really relevant for all of us. And, uh, and I hope people recognize that they have to go through some, some form of suffering if they really want to get out of life what they want. Darren Harris, thank you so much for joining us, for making the time to be with us. You can go back to the Commonwealth Games now, whether you are watching on your TV or in the stadiums, no doubt you have many, many tickets. And mm -hmm. if anybody wants to get hold of you, they can get hold of you on darrenharrisgb.com. Thank you for giving us such a message of hope today. Thanks, Nikki.